exception handling in Java. So exception handling is a crucial part of writing robust, robust and error-free programs. It allows you to handle runtime errors, providing a way to react to exceptional circumstances, exceptional circumstances, without crashing your program. So what is an exception? So in Java, an exception is an event that disrupts the normal flow of the program. Um, it is an object that is thrown at runtime, and it can be caught and handled by a program. Exceptions can be caused by a variety of events, such as user input errors, uh, file not found errors, or division by zero errors. In exception handling, we have specific keywords. And Java provides specific keywords for exception handling. Uh, the keywords are try, uh, which has the block of code to monitor for exceptions, so like try this. Um, catch, the block of code to execute if and, uh, an exception occurs or specific type of exceptions. Um, so what to do if you get there. And then finally, so a block of code that always executes regardless of whether the exception occurs or not. So if the trial is successful, finally it will still run. If the trial wasn't successful and you had to catch, finally it will still run. Okay. And then throw, uh, which you, is used to explicitly throw an exception. So make one happen. Uh, throws with an S indicates that a method might Throw an exception. So you put it on a method that says it does throw an exception. Such as found out file. Okay. So the basic syntax of exception handling is as follows. We have a try. And then inside of that, you have the code that may throw an exception. So it'll try it. See what happens. Catch. In parentheses, the exception type. And then usually use E to the note. Like that's the error. Um, but anyway, so um, the code to handle that exception. So if that exception type E does occur, then here's a code to handle for it. Okay. Um, and then finally, code it always executes. Okay. Um, you don't have to use all three, you can just do try and catch. Right? Okay. So let's take a look at an example. We're going to uh, divide by zero, or division by zero, excuse me. Uh, so let's look at an example of handling the a division by zero error. So, get to this thing right here. All right, so I have uh, A, yeah, so we have inter two integer variables, A, uh, which is equal to 10, and B, which is equal to zero. And we're going to try to do A divided by B. And that will be saved to the result. And if whatever our result is, we'll get printed out. However, if there is an arithmetic exception, um, so, and, um, Error in arithmetic, in types or whatever, which in this case divided by zero. Uh, we will simply print out cannot divide by zero, and we'll get the message that comes with that, um, because there's a message that's already created for that exception to occur. And then finally, this block will always execute. So you see that finally will always execute. Okay, Let's take a look at that. Cannot divide by zero, and the issue was we divide by zero, and this block always executes. Try that with the big time here. So it be this two. Yeah. So so what we started with, we saw like um, the output was cannot divide by zero. And we had the colon and the slash by zero. Uh, that's the message that occurs for that arithmetic expression. Um, or arithmetic exception, excuse me. Uh, and this block, this block always executes. So when we're throwing, we can we can throw and catch custom exceptions as well, not just ones that are built in. So you can create your own custom exceptions by extending the exception class. Um, so let's take a look at what that would look like, shall we? So uh, I'm going to create a new class here. Um, my new class is going to be called Custom Exception. It extends the exception class. Um, and um, Custom Exceptions, um, excuse me, Custom Exceptions um, Constructor is going to have an, uh, in it an input value, or sorry, argument of string message. Uh, and then this super here, we'll talk about this later, but this will 
uh, we're going to go back to exception and um, put that message here. Okay, uh, for its creation. Okay, so um, let's try to do something a little bit different here. Let's kind of validate and make sure it sounds fun. Let's take a look at this though. Uh, inside of this thing. So try to do that. So we're going to try to validate the age. Um, and 15 is going to be our input into that method. And um, our catch is going to be our custom exception, which is going to display that message. Um, and so we have a method here, validate age. And it's a static method that is void, so it returns method. It's an, in, uh, an argument of uh, an integer type, which has a variable age. And this can throw, possibly throw, so throws is used here, the custom exception. So it can possibly throw this. Um, and then here, essentially all we're doing is just checking to see what the age is less than 18. And so we're going to let them know, hey, this exception needs to be thrown. We're going to throw a new, um, a new class, or sorry, a new object of this class, um, custom exception. And this message is going to be age must be 18 or older. Uh, else, this is going to be uh, age is valid. Okay? And that's just going to get thrown out. So let's take a look here. We're going to evaluate for age 15 here. Let's see what happens. So as you would expect, age 15, 15 is not 18. So custom, so as we call a custom exception, as we said we would here, because this threw an exception, it threw a custom exception. And the custom exception was age must be 18 or and then we got the message we're waiting for. Right. And then let's try 15 now. This is valid. So the output we saw was caught custom exception, age must be 18 or older. So uh, let's talk about handling of multiple exceptions. So you can handle multiple exceptions by using multiple catch blocks. So let's take a look at. Yeah. All right, so we're going to try to pick this uh, integer array, which is going to be called numbers. It's going to have in it one, two, and three. And we're going to try to print out the, uh, the, uh, the element that is at index five. Well, of course, there's only going up to index two in here, so this will throw an example. And we're going to try uh, to get this result of 10 divided by zero. So um, we got two uh, area, common uh, area exceptions that we would, that you could see uh, just in coding. Error index out of bounds exception. So this is the teller what to do if it goes out of bounds with the indexes, uh, which this does. Uh, in this case, we'll say array index is out of the bounds. And then we have arithmetic exception E, arithmetic exception. Okay, so uh, let's take a look and see which one we get wrong. Okay, notice how we see the first one index out of bounds for length three, which is only three long because length three is zero. Okay, um, if I were to change this so this is Okay. Now three gets printed out, but then we go to the arithmetic exception. Um, we got ten. We got the bottom here. Okay. All right. So um, the best practices for exception handling are to use specific exceptions. Um, so that you can catch specific exceptions rather than the general exception to make your exception handling uh, more precise. Um, so if you know what type of uh, program you've created, you know possible exceptions that could happen, that's where you want to be specific about your exceptions. And you can just always look up with the catch on. Um, there are a lot of, well, there are only a few very common ones. Um, don't just swallow exceptions. Avoid using it to catch blocks. Sometimes people just say catch exception and then have it do nothing. Um, always handle the exception, or at least log it, so um, so you can know, like, you know, an error occurred, or you can log it in the background, um, also so for yourself, um, you can keep track of 
something that you the program you created. Um, I want to keep track of what errors happen so that we can make changes to it so you can have uh, better exception handling with it. Always clean up your resources. So use the finally block to clean up resources like if you need to close files that you open that didn't close or database connections. Uh, so and then document exceptions. Use the throws keyword in um, method signatures. So whenever you create your method, use that throws with the S keyword uh, to indicate what exceptions a method can throw. So what could possibly happen if you know, this is what it's supposed to do. Okay. Uh, and this makes um, this will be making your code easier to understand and maintain. So, in conclusion, exception handling in Java is a powerful feature that allows you to create robust and fault tolerant, not faultless, but fault tolerant application um, by properly using try catch blocks, creating custom exceptions, and following those best practices. You can handle unexpected events gracefully and keep your programs running smoothly. Bon appetit.